Time travel is a very old aspect of science fiction, being a part of the genre for over a century. In my last video on the Ong's Hat ARG, I demonstrated how old of a concept alternate reality games are. The merging of these two concepts would result in another one of the first internet mysteries, and also one that could be considered an ARG, or proto-ARG to an extent. In 1998, two faxes were sent to the talk show host Art Bell, which contained information regarding the future invention of time travel. It claims that time travel will be invented in 2034 by researchers at CERN. It claims that it uses rotating singularities inside of a magnetic field, and that by altering the speed and direction of rotation, you could travel both forward and backward in time. It also says that every time the time machine's singularity engine is turned off, a new universe is created that branches off of the original one, and he further compares this process to connected lines, or perhaps a tree and its branches. According to him, in order to get to the original timeline, the user must set themselves several seconds back in time, and then set the engine to go forward. Additionally, he claimed that he met his past self numerous times and taken him on trips around the time machine. They also claim that there is no future past 2564 and that the timeline went bad around the year 2000 and that he's attempting to determine the cause of this. Some of his other claims about events in the future are that Y2K ends in disaster and that many people die on the highways when they freeze to death trying to get to warmer weather. Furthermore, he states that the government will attempt to institute martial law, but fails and ends in its collapse. Afterwards, a communal system becomes the predominant one after the disaster. He states, Art, the reason why I'm here now is because I believe a nuclear weapon set off by Iraq in the Middle East or with Israel might have something to do with the damaged timeline. I will test that theory and get back to you. A second fax was sent to him later, presumably from the same individual. This one seemed more in line with the rest of Tyler's story. This stated that he was to be leaving this timeline soon, as he wished to not affect it too much, as he had developed attachments to some of the people he had met. He states he intends on helping this timeline by sharing information about its future. He says, I also urge you to reconsider your paranoia to the Russians. They are not preparing for war with the average U.S. citizen. They are preparing for war with the U.S. government. They will eventually save this country and the lives of millions of Americans. He offers to prove his identity by showing scans of the operations manual of his time machine and colored photographs of his vehicle, as well as to share with him facts about the nature of time travel and the like. Several years later, on November 2nd, 2000, a user by the name of TimeTravel underscore zero made a post on the forums of the now defunct site Time Travel Institute. It was in a thread titled Time Travel Paradoxes and read, Wow, Paul is right on the money. I was just about to give up hope on anyone knowing who Typler or Kerr was on this world line. By the way, number two is the correct answer, and the basics for time travel start at CERN in about a year and end in 2034 with the first time travel built by GE. Too bad we can't post pictures or I'd show it to you. It was in reply to a user named Paul who said, The future they travel to might just have been one possible future. In the quantum many worlds theory, there are an infinite amount of futures where every possibility occurs. Next year, on the 27th of January, he would post Art Bell's post post forum saying, Greetings, I am a time traveler from the year 2036. I am on my way home after getting an IBM 5100 computer system from the year 1975. My time machine is a stationary mass, temporal displacement unit manufactured by General Electric. The unit is powered by two Topson dual positive singularities that produce a standard offset Tipler sinusoid. I will be happy to post pictures of the unit. The IBM he needed contained pieces of coding that would be needed in the future. The computer he needed was also one apparently developed by his own grandfather. He was chosen by the army due to his knowledge of history and because of the work his grandfather did on the computer. At one point, he promised to his grandfather that he would return at some point to the year 2000. He stated, Perhaps it would be better if you considered me a fraud, which could be considered reverse psychology. This thread is where he shares the most information and reveals the name of his time machine, the C204 Gravity Distortion Unit. He gives the place of discovery of time travel as being in Geneva, Switzerland, presumably in experiments involving the Large Hadron Collider. He claims that General Electric is the company producing the devices and describes some of its features, which include two housing units for dual micro-singularities, which are used to power the device, an electron injection manifold that manipulates the mass of the micro-singularities, a cooling and x-ray system, and several clocks and computer units. He also detailed the invention of time travel. He states, as pointed out earlier, acceleration will produce time dilation. He describes the twin paradox as an example of this, where if one twin were to stay on Earth while the other travels through time, the one traveling would experience lower passing time, thus appearing to be younger than the other twin when they returned to Earth. 
He states that this form of time travel is only isolated to a single timeline and that the individual cannot meet themselves. According to him, an observation of traveling through rotating, donut-shaped singularities is that an object or individual could travel through time by entering an alternate universe or another world line. This is unlike the result of traveling to a static one, which would crush anything that enters it under its gravity. He then proposes a question, where do we find a donut-shaped singularity? He gives an answer to this question. He says CERN will produce singularities a fraction of the size of an electron, and by having two of these in close proximity, a tipler gravity sinusoid is produced. It can be manipulated to emulate the effects of a donut-shaped singularity, allowing time travel. Other things he states in this thread include explaining how the variable gravity lock system kept the machine and its passenger fixed in one place in its environment to prevent it from floating off into space or merging with other objects. The clock's computer system assisted the device to make sure the traveler's trip to and back from their original world line is as safe and easy as possible. He also cannot travel much further than 60 years, as the divergent experience as a result of the time travel would render the timeline in which he lands in unrecognizable to the original one. According to him, the longer the unit is on beyond a safe divergence confidence, which is a chance that a new timeline will be similar to the original, the more odd the new timeline would seem. Also included are scans of the operations manual of the machine. As a result of this, he cannot travel to the same exact universe he came from, and from it we can assume that his universe is 2.5% different from ours. Tyler would make his final post on the 24th of March. He states that he will be traveling back to his original timeline and that the users of the forum should be notified when he is gone. He gives an answer to the question of, if time travel is real, where are all the time travelers? Saying the reason why they don't appear is because of the risk that they put themselves in when trying to help people of the past that are unwary of the danger that they will be soon be put into. He did leave behind some predictions. One states that a civil war will start in the United States in 2004 and that it will end in 2015 with the beginning of World War III. The conflict would have only featured guerrilla warfare until it started to reach its end. World War III would start with Russia attacking the United States, Europe, and China. The war became nuclear, although the world would soon recover. Afterwards, the United States would be reorganized, being subdivided into five areas based on economic and defensive strengths. The Constitution was scrapped and replaced, as well as the power of the federal government being more decentralized. Titer was a member of the armed forces who was based in Tampa, Florida, joining a shotgun infantry unit named the Fighting Diamondbacks in 2011. He also mentioned the topic of UFOs, explaining how they were still a mystery in 2036, and how some believe that they could also be time travelers coming from a more advanced future. One of Titer's closest companions was an individual known as Pamela Moore. They exchanged various emails, including a copy of the handbook, and it is assumed that they are a believer in Titer's story. After the disappearance of Titer, one question that remained was, who exactly is John Titer? A common theory is that he was a persona invented by lawyer Larry Haber and his brother, a computer expert named Maury Haber. In 2008, an Italian television program hired a private investigator to obtain information regarding Titer. They were unable to get any evidence of a real individual named John Titer, but they did discover that the Habers were involved in numerous things relating to Titer in some way. Larry Haber was found to be the lawyer of a for-profit organization called the John Titer Foundation, and Maury Haber apparently had the technical knowledge to be able to start and keep up a hoax such as John Titer. A private investigator named John Houston, known by a pseudonym John Rasmus, showed that Titer was an invention of Maury Haber, and his brothers had minimal involvement in the persona, which he discovered through emails with another Haber brother, Arthur Haber. Arthur at one point claimed that he was told by Larry who Titer was, but later said he was never told and requested videos and documents pertaining to Houston's 12-year-long investigation of Titer's true identity be taken down, and claimed Houston breached his privacy when emails between the two were made public. It was noted that Maury Haber and John Titer's writings seemed similar after Houston was given access to them. He compiled a list of words and phrases that were common between Titer and Haber's writings, and used this as evidence supporting the fact that the two people were one and the same. They also include a list of 88 names that appear to be fake identities used by sock puppet accounts replying to Titer in his I am from 2036 thread that were used by the same people behind Titer. He showed that the names disappeared off of the face of the internet at the same time as Titer and had never talked about him on any other sites. The fake accounts however used different writing styles in Titer, unlike the similar writing styles shared by Titer and Haber. Out of the 112 posters in the thread, 104 never posted using the same name again. Houston theorizes that John Titer was used to promote a book titled John Titer, A Time Traveler's Tale. The book was released by the same John Titer Foundation that Larry Haber was a lawyer of. 
Additionally, in October of 2004, someone named Martin B. Pullman filed patents for a method of gravity distortion and time displacement using images of similar terminology that Titer used in his posts. Haber, in an interview in 2014, would say, When I get asked the question, is it real, my answer is always the same. I don't know. I don't question whether or not I do the work that I'm hired to do. Whether or not Titer really was a time traveler coming to warn us of our impending doom or an elaborate hoax thought up by a group of brothers trying to advertise a book, it certainly made its impact on internet culture, specifically its more mysterious branch, becoming an early example of a mystery on the internet.